so good, it's so, so good. A big thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Morning, everybody. Fantastic to see you all again. And I am in the Dolomites. Uh, I have no idea where I'm going, is the truth of the matter. The road I was wanting to go on was closed. So I'm just gonna hike up to a high point here. I'm a little bit late for sunrise. I'm gonna talk all about a new, really exciting lens from Nikon. I'm out of breath. We're at 2,000 meters and there's a lot less oxygen and I'm unfit, more importantly. Uh, but I'm here with my much, much fitter bro son, not brothers, they're my sons. But it looks pre pretty spectacular over there. I am so unfit. So this lens from Nikon, this new lens is got to be the ultimate focal length. So it's 28 millimeters all the way to 400 millimeters. So for something like this, where you walk in, in the mountains, I think this could potentially replace my 24 to 200. It is, there's a few caveats with that. It only goes as wide as 28. So if you're gonna do a wide angle shot like some of these flowers, then you're perhaps gonna to wanna to take a wider angle lens as well. But most of the time, 28 is probably enough. And the f-stop is f4 at 28 and f8 at 400, which will be fine. What I'm interested in though, and what I'm gonna try and test out a little bit is how it compares to my 24 to 120 lens, um, which is really high quality and what the quality is like. So I'm gonna take a few shots with that lens, a few shots with this lens and see how they compare. I'm just waiting for the sun to rise. I think we're probably gonna get sun in about 20, 30 minutes, something like that. But the, oh my gosh, the scene, just look around here at the scene. It just looks absolutely spectacular. What I'm trying to do here is just show that you can actually get some flower shots, even though I said it's probably not ideal for it because I'm shooting around about 30 millimeters. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on these flowers here and then focus on the background here and then also bracket it as well. Right, I think that worked. The sun's just coming out and the beams are looking really good now. So I might, <laughs> using this 28 to 400 millimeters, just go super long. I'll stay where I am actually. So I might take this again when we get some light on the flowers, but I'm just gonna go super long and take that shot. I'll just do one more of this, I think, 28 mil. Right, the, the, the light's coming out now. It looks so good. It's so good now. So I'm shooting at like F13, maybe even even wider. I just want to get that sort of sunburst as it comes around the um, the thing. I might have just missed it, but it, oh, it looks so good. I'm going to go all the way to 400, and we'll see what that's like. Oh, you can see, like you can almost see the the, the roundness of the sun. That looks so good. Oh, there's some flowers. Look here. These look really good. Oh, it's just not in the sun, are they? Maybe I can just get like this in here. You have to operate so fast when the sun's like this. Because it changes so quickly. Yeah, that's so good, that. That is so good. Oh, how can I get these flowers? Okay, so I'm just trying to get these flowers down here. Um, but it's tricky because they're in the shade, but I think they'll look quite nice even though they're in the shade. So again, I've just got to sort of bracket a lot and try not and burn out the sun too much, even though it's pretty much impossible. So I'm, I'm just taking bracket and focused shots, basically. And yeah, so one at the top, one in the middle, and one at the bottom and I'm shooting at F10 at 28 millimeters. Oh, this looks good, this looks good. The 
just what looks so good is the light hitting all the grass you know it's just it just creates so much more texture everywhere because it's really low light so i've just switched my lens for the um, 24 to 120 which is my favorite lens it's super sharp but obviously it doesn't have that reach on it but i've shot here i've just shot at um around about 100 in fact i'll check the exact settings of it 105 mil so i'm going to shoot this at 105 mil as well um and see what the comparison in terms of quality is i'll shoot it at different apertures as well so we can compare it at the edges i think this will give us a reasonable comparison but i might take another shot later as well oh well it's pretty spectacular but it's got harsh really quite quickly um i feel like there's still some long lens shots so i think i'm going to i've tried to do some foreground shots but i think with with the sky being so blue when you try and do something a little bit wider angle then you've got a lot of blue sky and i don't think it looks amazing so i'm going to do some longer shots and just pick out some of the details with the 400 millimeters but oh wow it's so spectacular it's such a nice temperature at the moment as well the dolomax is quite good i have to say so i grabbed some shots between around 300 and 400 millimeters as the amazing light just created these beautiful silhouetted hills. Right, it's evening now and the conditions are looking amazing. We're in the car park. We're just gonna hike up this trail here and hopefully shoot these incredible mountains. The good thing is, is there's blue sky over there where the sun sets. It could be amazing. Best conditions I've ever photographed in a while. Just look at it over there. <sighs> so I'm here, I managed to drag all my family. Um, they're really excited, aren't you? <laughs> oh, that lack of oxygen is hard, but there's a little bit of thunder around, which I'm just a little bit wary about. But I think we're okay here and the clouds over there are epic and the sun's going to set in that blue area over there oh my word it doesn't get better than this oh my word this is unbelievable so we just stopped here because they are looking fantastic. The pointiness of these mountains as they're getting this side light just looks so, so incredible. Um, I've still got my 28 to 400 millimeter lens on and actually I've just been shooting at 50 mil then. Um, the clouds are fantastic as you'll see by the B-roll before this really, well, it doesn't get better than this, does it, photo? This is about as good as it gets in landscape photography. It doesn't ever get better than this. Just look at that. We've got the perfect conditions and there's a plane flying over there. Oh my word. And it's shorts weather as well. So I'm just gonna pick out these, doing long lens with my 28 to 400. What a, what a lens this is for conditions like this. And yeah, I'll also put my 24 to 120 on, we'll compare it, but I'm just going to pick out little elements of the background mountains here. This is so incredible. Right, go, go, go.
You say that something's got to give. You say. So I'm going down now to a point where people sort of pose. It gives a bit of scale to this landscape. You've probably seen this shot before, but I love to take it. I actually took it when I was just walking past. There was a girl with a white dress on, which looked really good. So I'll post that photo as well. But um, I've got some volunteers as well. So there's a little bit of a queue here to go and stand over there. But my son Thomas is going to go and, and photograph it. But whilst we're doing that, everyone else with all sorts of different colour coats are coming. This is so cool. I mean, I'm not usually into these type of shots with people in it, but this gives it scale. It looks really fantastic. But I can also, again, with this 28 to 400, just pick out details. And there's details everywhere in this landscape. It's so, so spectacular. So I think we're going to lose the sun now. It's going into the cloud. We've just got to hope that that cloud just sort of keeps pushing away. Um, but if we've had the best of it, then it's been fantastic. What an absolutely incredible evening. And there's no drone footage because Dumbo here left the drone batteries in the car. So the next evening, I remembered my drone. We went back out to the similar area and these incredible rock columns just looked incredible amongst all the other mountains and we got some amazing light again. Right, so it's the next day now and we are, we were over there, I'll put a little marker of where we were, but we've walked today the other side of these mountains. I can't pronounce the mountains so I'm just going to put on screen what they are. But I want to talk a little bit about the 28 millimeter end of the 28 to 400 because I feel like that, you, you do miss that extra sort of wide angle. So I think it's useful to have, when you have that lens with you, something like a, a 14 to 24, or in my case, I've got this 14 to 30 here. Um, because this um, 14 to 30, um, if I just show you actually, so what I'll do is I'll go on here and record this. So this is at 28 millimeters now. So you can see that to get the whole mountain in, I've got to really, go quite high and have no foreground or I can go vertically I suppose but I really want to get a good shot here I want to have probably a bit of um, foreground and a bit of sky even now you know I'm struggling at 14 millimeters um, to get this foreground in so I'll probably go vertical but you know when you're trying to get foreground in then you really miss that wide angle lens so I definitely recommend if you are just going to get that lens just to keep your wide angle lens with you because it's still super useful, especially when you've got epic scenes like this in the Dolomites. It's, <laughs> this is like the most amazing, amazing light now. The sun's come out and hitting the side of this really strongly. Um, I've got a vertical shot up at the moment, but I've taken quite a few different shots, but as I said before, I'm using my 14 to 30 millimeter lens now. This is where that other lens probably doesn't quite cut it. I do need that wider angle lens. Um, I've got a wider shot because the, the mountains over here look really, really good. And then the mountain here and then the sunset. And it's just absolutely stunning. We've just got dark clouds, beautiful, beautiful sunlight and it doesn't get better than this. Right, time for an apple. I've got a final shot, which I think is going to be these grasses here. Um, I'll just show you on the screen, which is this shot here. Just got the grasses at the bottom. I'm not 100% sure it works, but I'm going to take it anyway. And I'm just going to enjoy the view on the way down with this absolutely huge Italian apple. I'm back at home now and I've had time to think about this lens. Before I talk about it and show you some photos, I've got some prints. I just want to say that my 2025 calendar is now available to pre-order. So this 
is the new format, the same format I used last year with bigger boxes um, and slightly, slightly larger calendar um, in the portrait form. And I am so happy with this. The photos in this look fantastic. I've got some from Antarctica. So this was a lone penguin here. I've got some from the Lake District um, and all over the world. So some from Patagonia. I've got this amazing shot that I took with my um, drone um, in the Lake District, these four rainbows. And yeah, I'm, I think it's come out really well. I've also got some woodland shots. This is, this is December's shot here, which I'm really, really pleased with. So if you're looking to get one of these and pre-order one of these, a couple of things. One, um, I announced it two weeks ago now and I am more than sold half of them because I'm doing a limited run on it. Um, basically because there's a lot of work in packing it all. So there is a limited run. They will go before Christmas. In fact, I suspect they'll sell out in the next month and a half. So if you're looking to get one, then make sure you order one early because I know there was a lot of people disappointed last time. And then the other thing is that there's going to be a golden ticket as, in this again. Um, and for, for the winner of a golden ticket, um, they will get a limited edition print of their choice. Okay, link in the description below. Let's have a look at these prints and talk a bit more about this lens. I just want to talk a little bit more about this lens of 28 to 400 because I've obviously had a chance to look at the images, look at the different focal lengths I shot with it. Um, so my overall impressions are this is an amazing lens and I'll definitely be taking this when I'm hiking places. There's some good things, some not so good things, and I'm going to talk about those in a little bit more detail. But, you know, the reality is that this is a 28 to 400. It's replacing this and something like the 24 to 120 or the 24 to 70. So, you know, it's lighter. Um, the fact it extends like that doesn't really bother me too much. It's got tight tolerance on it. You know, it's, it's really well built. It feels really good. So here, here's um, a few images. First, this one, this is shot wider. So this is close to the 28 millimeter range. I am so impressed with all the images at 28 millimeters. It is super sharp at that focal length. Um, there's a little bit, bit of chromatic aberration. Um, also, there's a little vignetting uh, as well, which you can correct afterwards, and the chromatic aberration. But the sharpness of it at that, at the wide angle, is super good. Like, comparable to the 24 to 120, which is really good. So yeah, this is a shot taken, taken there. I really like this. It's worked really, really well. Um, then we get to longer focal length. So this was taken um, a longer focal length. I'm, I'll put on the screen here exactly what it was shot at. But then you start to see a little bit of softness towards the edges. Um, I can notice it just a bit here. Um, but having said that, and I've talked about this so many times in my video, composition, light, um, the location, all matter so much more than, you know, just pixel peeping at, um, uh, at the image. And in the middle of the image, it's, it's super sharp. If somebody just put this in front of me, I would not think, oh, that's a bit soft at the edges. It looks great. Yes, it isn't as sharp as the 24 to 120, um, or definitely not as sharp as the 100 to 400, especially when you get to the 400 millimeter end. So at the 400 millimeter end, this this is probably in, you know quite a bit off this. However, if you shoot wide open, um, and wide open on this is the f8, then it's pretty good. It really is pretty good. Um, but the big downside of it, um, and this is obvious really, is you can't shoot super wide. So you lose that 28 to 24 uh, compared to the 24 to 120. Um, but having said that, I always just stick my 14 to 30 lens in my camera bag because this lens is super sharp, it's really light, and this and this, um, the 28 to 400 and the 14 to 30 are super, super good. And I shot to 40 to 30 here. I'll finish with this image. This was shot on the 14 to 30 at 14 millimeters. Um, and to get a shot like this, where you're really over the top of the image and shooting down into the image, the super wide angle, then you need something like this 14 to 30. But overall, I'm impressed with it. It's better at wide than it is long. However, compared to something like the 
um, 24 to 200, I'd say it's similar at, at its long end, um, which is not pin sharp, but in the middle it's pretty good, towards the edges it's not as good. So I've put some of the images of these shots taken with the 28 to 400 millimeter lens on a blog. Um, so you can see them in high resolution, you can have a look at them and decide what you think of the images. I'll, I'll put some at different um, focal lengths. Um, I've done that with Squarespace, who are the sponsor of this week's episode. Squarespace are a fantastic platform, as I've spoken about so many times before, if you want to set up your own website and have control of the quality of your own photos online, basically. There are amazing templates, it's super easy to set up, you don't have any technical knowledge needed, and um, you can do anything. You can do blogs, you can sell calendars, <laughs> prints, um, you can even take bookings for workshops. It's a really fantastic all-in-one platform. I've used it for years now and I'm still super happy with it. You get 10% off using squarespace.com forward slash Nigel or use the offer code Nigel and it massively helps this channel out. Thanks ever so much for watching and until next Sunday, bye.